Welcome to our lecture online. So when did life appear on the earth? Well, that is not as easy to answer as you might think. Now, when we go back about 540 million years, that's when the Cambrian period started. We had an explosion of life forms during that time. And since then, Earth has been populated by all kinds of different life forms, including the well-known dinosaurs. No question that the Earth was populated for the last half a billion years by all kinds of various life forms that have come and gone, that have become extinct, new life forms came about. And so currently, of course, now we have people on the Earth that only been there for the last several hundred thousand years for sure and maybe as far back as a few million years but we're pretty sure about the history of life on the earth for the last half a billion years but we think that life first started on the earth about three and a half billion years ago and so the question is what was life like during that long three billion year period on the earth there's not a lot of information it's very sparse and for the reason the reasons of course are that in order for us to find evidence fossilized life all the way back to three and a half billion years the rocks that were formed there that contain that fossilized life still have to exist and the earth is a very living planet living meaning it goes through enormous geological changes volcanic eruptions tectonic plate movements subduction all kinds of things weathering rivers rain snow you know you name it things have simply disappeared and new rocks have formed. There's not a lot of places we can go to in the world where we can still find rocks that are three and a half billion years old. But they're there, we can find them. And in some cases, we find things that appear to be small, very tiny, very tiny fossilized life. Now, under enormous scrutiny, of course, the scientific community will look at these things very carefully. And a lot of times, what we thought initially might be fossilized life later on ended up being non-fossilized life. In other words, it was simply a chemical process that produced these things and not necessarily produced life. For example, we have something that looks like a very tiny worm-like structure. It's not a worm at all. This is more at the size of the bacteria. Very, very tiny, singular cell kind of life. Very microscopic. This is microscopic. They call them microfossils. And after enormous scrutiny, they found out, no, this is non-organic material. These are, this is not evidence of fossilized life. We do have a couple of other places that date back to about 3.2 billion years where we have found things that, even under scrutiny, seem to appear to be tiny fossilized life. But the most convincing argument is that we still find things called stromatolites today in Shark Bay on the coast at Shark Bay, Australia. What those things are, those are sedimentary layers that are interlaced with bacteria that was living at the time. They produce all the byproducts and we can find those byproducts inside the layers of those stromatolites. And they're very peculiar in shape and we can see the layers very carefully and with microscopes we can go in there and see the presence of these very fine structures of life that are in there. Now these are still living today and it turns out that about three and a half billion years ago, we found rocks dated to that time. We find layers like that that look very similar to the current stromatolites that also appear to be layered and also appear to contain the structures that seem to have been caused by bacterial type life all the way back to about three and a half billion years. So the sedimentary layers interlaced with the fossilized bacteria appear to be, have been present on the earth about three and a half billion years ago. And it has withstood quite a bit of, of scientific scrutiny and it does appear that this may be about the time period where the oldest fossilized life on the earth has appeared. Now, we're lucky because these structures are fairly large. They're made out of sedimentary layers and we do find things they're about this size right here. They're actually quite large and we can then with a microscope go see inside and see something that looks very similar to what still lives today. However, there's a vast amount of time, 3 billion years, where the amount of fossilized life that we find is very scarce and is very difficult to prove that this was actually organic living material or was simply produced by normal chemical processes. Organic chemistry that is completely devoid of life. So the challenges are to distinguish fossils, real fossils of real organic life from structures that were formed through non-biological chemical processes. Quite often, most often, it is the former, the, the latter, rather than the former. 
And an additional real big problem is to actually date these fossils because how do we know that these were three and a half billion years old? Well, we do so by the content of these rocks and you know, those rocks have to contain the kind of radioactive material that we can measure and date to see how old those rocks are. And by and large, many rocks around the world do not contain these radioactive materials. So those are rather rare. And so if the rocks themselves or the fossils themselves do not contain those radioactive materials, so we can't directly date them, we have to date things nearby, layers above or layers below where we found the fossil, that may give us an indication of how old that may be. It's secondary information, not direct information, and we could be dead wrong with those estimates. So it's not as simple, it's not as easy. But it does appear that life has been on the Earth in a very primitive fashion for about 3 billion years. We're talking about 3 billion years where the only life on the Earth appeared to have been singular cell type of life in very primitive structures. And not until about 540 million years ago when we had what we call the Cambrian explosion, the explosion of life, where these vast arrays of different kinds of life forms began to appear that set on the life that then populated the world for the last half a billion years or so. So, it's very interesting. And why are we talking about this now? Because essentially we want to get to the question, how did life form itself on the Earth? And so we're looking for this spirit right here, somewhere in this neighborhood of time, that life began on the Earth. And the question is, how did it begin and what was it like? And those are very big questions that we're going to try to answer in the videos to come. And that is how it happened. So, um, that section there in the middle, those this, are, this vast section here? Yeah, those are just what? Time periods in which very seldom we find snippets of evidence that appears to look like very primitive life lived on the Earth. Not a lot. All single cell. We didn't see multi-celled stuff until we get kind of the Cambrian period. And what are the multiple cells? Oh, well, we'll get to that. But it's the, the variety of life in about a 20, 30 million year period from very primitive to an enormous variety of very complex life. The stuff that you see on science movies, science fiction movies and things like that. <laughs> Big insects, all kinds of underwater life, I mean, it was... So there's not even like a plant doing that? No, nothing. Just very, very primitive bacteria-like, single-cell-like life. So yeah. this is what plants start? Yeah, um, well, not quite. So the initial explosion was in the sea. Of course, the Cambrian period started with all the life in the sea. That's where it's much more convenient for life to begin. And then it began to come on life during the Paleozoic area. area yeah.